The state of California accepts the responsibility for persons with developmental, developmental disabilities. disabilities. And an obligation, an obligation to them. To them. Which it must Which discharge. It must discharge. Back to hundreds of thousands of children. And adults directly. And having an important impact on the lives of their on families. Their neighbors, neighbors. The whole communities. Developmental disabilities. disabilities. Present social, social medical, medical, economic, and legal problems, problems. Of, extreme of extreme importance. importance. The core of our service delivery system are direct support professionals. These are the individuals that make it happen every day for our consumers. These are the individuals that get consumers out of bed. These are the individuals that are their teachers, their support network. These are the individuals that implement each consumer's individual program plan each and every day. A good job coach has to know a little bit of everything. They have to be able to come into their workplace seeing all different types of perspectives or seeing through different types of perspectives. Perspectives of the employer and what they need, what the quotas they need to fill are, what their expectations are for our clients. They need to see through the perspective of the clients. What are going to be challenges? What are going to be strengths? Uh, how does the client think? How do they learn? And kind of dissect that and figure out the best way to make our clients successful. I think our trainers also need to be artists. They need to be creative, think out of the box, uh, try to try new things, have that bravery and that confidence to do what it takes to make our clients successful. They're liaisons. They need to build a connection, a relationship with the employers, do their best to be professional in that way and support our clients in being professionals. They're really jacks of all trade and it takes a lot for them to really support our clients. And they have to pull from all aspects of their life, whether it's their own education, their own life experiences, or experiences with their own families and how they talk to their families or teach their children or teach their cousins how to do something. Uh, you have to know a lot and it takes a lot of love and spirit and experience in all aspects of their lives to be a trainer. It's a very involved job, it's a very rewarding job. One of the greatest threats to our service delivery system is the turnover of direct care professionals. Oftentimes individuals stay less than a year in any particular position or they have to work two or three positions in order to make ends meet for themselves. This is a direct relationship to the wages that are paid to these individuals. But turnover has a more insidious uh, impact on our system. It impacts our consumers directly. My name is Luz Gonzalez and I'm in a group home organization. I provide residential care with people with different abilities. The reason why I came here, as a toddler, my son was diagnosed with special needs. I came to this organization because I had a night shift that would allow me during the day to care for my son, because no babysitter could watch him due to his behaviors. Everything were good, until the company that I work for eliminated overtime hours. I know I couldn't afford childcare for my son or provide for my family in my, in my overnight wages. I was forced to work two jobs. After leaving my night shift, I would go home and get my son ready for school. Then head back to the dental office. I would just have time to be with my son a couple of hours. And I will, he I will have to get back and work my night shift. As I didn't have enough time to be home, my son started to have more challenges in school. It was very hard to juggle this. If I had a choice, I would only work one job. Care for my residents, work for the company that I opened the doors to me when I needed the most. Help my son get through school. But I don't have a choice. The DSP positions turn over quite frequently. We can have some amazing, exceptional staff be with us for one to two years before they move on. And that's quite devastating for everybody involved, devastating for 
the clients, for their families, for the host employees where our clients work, um, for their environment. It's very hard for our clients to adjust to new folks coming in and so when that turnover happens, someone else comes in, that trust, that relationship with families, with everybody involved has to start all over again. And so it's quite devastating for everyone when that turnover happens and someone leaves after a year or two when they just got trained, they just got a hang of it and everything has started to finally connect together. As a direct support professional, I worked with uh, young adults with uh, autism and other disabilities. Um, I was uh, I would train them on how to work in a kitchen so they can work either commercial kitchens um, or other uh, paying jobs. Uh, I worked for about two years before leaving. There was no way I could earn a good living as an instructor there. You can't live on what I was paid. We need our legislature to act. The lack of funding is unraveling our system. What I mean by that is that we are approximately 30 to 36 percent underfunded in terms of the rates that are paid to our providers. As such, the wages that are paid to our direct support professionals are not such that we're able to retain, recruit the best possible people and folks that can make a career out of working with people with developmental disabilities. The clients, they take time to come out of their shell, so it affects them, that turnover affects them in a very hard way because it takes time for them to come out of their shell. It takes time to build that trust, to build that relationship with their trainer, to have that openness where they can come to them when there's an issue at their workplace or when there's an issue in their lives. Does that mean I can't see my doctors and get my medication? You, it might happen, Gary. I was scared, I'm glad you're here. Well, that's what I'm here to help you, Gary. Over the last seven years, we have lost over 119 service providers, mostly due to inadequate rates. This has impacted thousands of our consumers. That's disrupted their services, it's disrupted the continuity of their care, it's disrupted their lives. It's caused a number of direct support professionals to lose their jobs. This has impacted over a thousand consumers. Uh, their services have been disrupted, they've had to change programs. In essence, they've had to start over again because we're not able to maintain a stable service delivery system.